Two parents are behind bars after police say they held their 13 children captive inside their California home. It happened about two hours outside Los Angeles. Police say the kids were kept in filthy conditions. Some were chained to beds. This was the scene in Paris, California today, about an hour east of L.A. Police say a 17-year-old girl escaped from this home, called police, and told officers she and her 12 brothers and sisters were being held captive by their parents, David and Louise Turpin. The family's neighbors described this morning's shocking scene. They were very, very pale skinned, like almost like they've never seen the sun. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. It's so sad. That disbelief was felt in Las Vegas, too. It took about two seconds when I saw their faces in their, their picture. Uh, I'm still disturbed. And Kent Ripley disturbed. works at the Elvis Chapel in downtown Las Vegas, where the Turpins had their vows renewed several different times, most recently in 2016. This is very uh, a sad day uh, for for everybody, especially I mean the children. There's just uh, I mean they were sitting right around here. Um, three different times. At least two of those ceremonies were videotaped and put on the chapel's website. You can see Ripley dressed as Elvis performing the ceremony. David and Louise Turpin are at the altar and their kids are alongside them. They seem to care about each other. They cared about the kids. They seemed to smile. The kids were smiling. They didn't hide behind themselves. They were very quiet. And tonight, Ripley and other workers at the chapel say they're still trying to understand the horrific allegation. There's not much known right now. They've lived in this house in uh, Paris, California. That's P-E-R-R-I-S. It's about an hour and a half southwest of Los Angeles. It looks like they've lived there for about four years. Uh, they have a lot of relatives in uh, Texas and West Virginia. Uh, as far as the kids go, uh, a neighbor told us that the kids only seem to go out at night and they look very pale. And what's most strange about this situation is that uh, you had seven adults and six uh, minors, and yet you look at the family photos and all of the adults, the seven adults, none of them look like they were older than 18 years old, even though the sheriff's department said uh, some of them were as old as 29 years old. So you really wonder you know, how much they were fed. You wonder how much their their growth was stunted. It's just a, a bizarre case uh, uh, to hear that some of them were uh, shackled and padlocked uh, to the beds uh, when the police arrived on Sunday. Well, we've heard from one of the neighbours, and I understand, as you said, you've spoken with some of the neighbours. What did they tell you? Did, did they have any suspicions at all about this family? Well, no, uh, they they didn't. And I, I don't know how it is in Australia, but in the United States, unfortunately, uh, neighbors getting to know neighbors very well is, is largely a thing of the past. So it's not surprising when uh, neighbors would say they don't know much uh, about them. But uh, they did tell us uh, the kids don't go out very much. The kids we do know uh, the six minors were being uh, schooled at home. They had a license from the state, to, the, the father did, to, uh, to teach the students at home, and he created his own little private school and named himself the, the principal. So you never saw the kids at school, uh, the regular public school, because they were being taught at home. Are there any indication or any more details about why the parents were keeping the children captive? No, the uh, sheriff's department said that they could find, to quote them, no logical reason. The parents gave no logical reason as to why the, the kids would be uh, uh, being held captive and why they would be uh, shackled uh, and uh, padlocked to their, to their beds. Uh, one thing to note is today, uh, Monday, is Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Uh, it's a holiday celebrating a uh, federal right, uh, civil rights leader. And so a lot of the child welfare and police and state education offices were closed. So it was very difficult to get more information uh, on, on those aspects of the case today. But uh, that, that should happen tomorrow. Well, I understand all the siblings are currently being treated for malnutrition. Do we know how they're coping with being free? Uh, no, no, we don't. Uh, we don't get access to uh, victims of, of crimes. Uh, no one in the media has, has spoken with them. Uh, the adults 
uh, that's a big question. Where do they go? They don't have the uh, foster care support system that the, the juveniles do, so it'll be interesting to see where they go. It might be easier to get a chance to talk to the adults uh, since uh, they'll, be, they'll be on their own and uh, not under the direction of anyone like the, the minors would be. So what will happen to the children now? Well, there is a foster care system in the, in the county where uh, children would be placed in homes uh, with uh, other parents who have been carefully screened, I can assure you, uh, before they're allowed to care for children. Uh, there are relatives. Uh, the relatives might seek to uh, have custody of the children. I have a feeling that the Sheriff's Department is going to wonder whether the relatives knew about this before they just hand over, uh, hand over the kids. Uh, you can imagine that uh, there's going to be some physical recovery. There, there's kids whose growth has been stunted. Uh, there's going to be psychological recovery uh, as well. Wow.